All right. Do you want me to count for you? What God loves, he puts into the waters. We know this to be true, but the waters are often a place where we are humbled, where God works in us in such a way to reveal, to transform us into the image of Christ. It's important that we know as Christians, we actually follow Christ into the waters. In uh, Matthew chapter three, we see Christ being baptized. Jesus Christ went to the river for John the Baptist to baptize him. He was baptized by someone He created in a river he created. Think about that. Jesus submitted to the will and the plan of the Father, and he was humbled. And we are called to do the same thing as Christians. We follow in the faithful tradition of Christ. We are his disciples. And so we recognize that Jesus is the forerunner of our faith. But he is not someone, as as Philippians 2 says, Um, Someone who considered equality with God something to be grasped, but rather he took on, he made himself nothing and took on the identity of a servant being made in human likeness. So what we understand in this is for you and I, we enter into the waters of humility and we must be transformed out of our pride and into humility because pride is the very original sin of Adam and Eve to exalt themselves against God. And what we know to be true is that in order for that pride to go, it has to be put to death and it's put to death in the waters of humility where we become less so that Christ may become more. Question number one. Can you laugh at yourself? All right, question two. John the uh, the Baptist spoke very bluntly to the uh, Pharisees, who were the legalistic hypocrites of his day um, in the religious scene, in the Jewish religious scene. Go ahead and reread verses uh, Matthew 3, verses 7. Through 12. After you read those, what are the parallels between uh, John's word to the Pharisees and the instructions of Psalm 1 that we studied during the Rooted series? Question 3. How did John the Baptist humble himself willingly? Question four, Adam and Eve sinned against God and disobeyed him because Satan told them that eating the fruit would make them like God. How are you tempted in your own way by your pride in the same kind of way as them? Question five, sometimes we can be like those who sit in the splash zone and insist that we're fine with being humbled. Then when we're splashed with waters of, of humility, we are angrier than we, are expe- than we expected to be. So take the splash zone test together. Have you ever had one of these thoughts? In the sermon, I mentioned uh, that you will encounter the waters of humility. We can enter willingly. Every day by the way, the way we treat others, the way we kind of respond to the world around us and view ourselves, or we can be placed into the waters unwillingly. Do you agree with that or do you disagree? So one of the questions we got was, uh, do we as a church have a board? Absolutely we have a board, yes. But uh, it's a little bit... Uh, different. And I want to explain it this way. When we were a planted church, we came out of recent reformed and the Zealand classes of the reformed church in America, they helped to plant us. And so we have a board that has members on it from different places. A couple members from the foundry, a couple from Vreesland, a couple from first reformed, who is a partner church. And then a couple members of the RCA classes and uh, general uh, regional synod. Uh, We've had some turnover in that, but we have a board that is, uh, it is made up of people who serve the classes and churches like ours, which aren't officially organized in the RCA. We'll talk more about the RCA a little bit later, but for right now, our board does govern us. It passes, it approves the budgets, it approves any staffing requests, it approves, uh, it approved doing this building, it approved the next initiative. 
uh, keeps accountability and governance over the church. So we are a board, we are a board-led church that uh, they have control in, enough to speak into and say, this needs to continue or this needs to stop. They can bl- bring discipline against the pastor if it needed to. It's, it's a full functioning board of the church. It's just run with a few different members from other churches. Uh, First Reform, namely, Vreesland doesn't have anybody on the board anymore, but um, also a classist representative Uh, one of the pastors here locally. So this next question came from a bunch of people, or actually one person asked it 11 times. Justin, weird. Eric, why do you look so good? Hmm. Well, Justin, I would like to answer that for you. It's a, it's a, a lack of diet and exercise in a high stress environment. Yeah, that's pretty much what contributes to the shape that I'm in. So thank you for asking that and shaming me publicly. Tom, I need help with my shame voice. 